How's everyone doing? I'm your host, the Mage Flame, and this is TSD. How's that? I hope you like that as an intro. Oh, that's just now getting an intro. You, you yeah. know, sometimes you know, eight, uh, eighty-two episodes in, you gotta figure out an intro. All right. Ooh, too formal. Not chaotic Ooh. enough. All right, let's try again. Hey, what up, gamers? <laughs> I'm your host. The mate. Oh, Instantly peeking oh. your microphone. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Is is Grizzle going to do our intro now? <laughs> hey, hey guys, hey, I'm Grizzle. Welcome to TSTE. I got a very special guest here, Rumham. Rumham, who ya are ya? Who do you play? Actually, both of them. Um, what incremental did you take? Both. Like my A team and B team oh, character. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> should, we, should we roll some B team icon relationships? That's too many icon relationships. Okay. Um, I'm Rumpam. I play Kalia, the shield bearer cleric, uh, and also Le Dufon, Harlequin, uh, Harley, who is a, uh, a fighter. Forgeborn fighter. I couldn't remember what my class was. Yes, a forgeborn fighter. Nice. How about the small one? <laughs> Ellen. Yeah, it's me. Okay. Uh, I'm Ellen. I play Dame Fury Jadespine, <laughs> the uh, dwarven operatic bard. And I also play Harren of Stone Roost, the human barbarian. And what incremental did you take? Uh, I took, let's see, we just did this and I forgot the name, uh, ability score bonus. Uh huh. I hope oh, you guys I did incrementals for both your characters, like I asked. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. You did, did not, I... not ask that. I no. asked it in my heart. Yeah. Okay. I well, only Hara gave just Kalia got an incremental. <laughs> so anyway, I boosted my hit points. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm doing right now. Here oh, man. What do you do when you have eight adventures all in one spot? I have a feeling this isn't going to be a good answer. Hey, how's it going? I'm Leon Lawrence, and I'm a commander. Oh, and also, I guess I'm Opid, the uh, the astral ant researcher occultist. And uh, Leanne got is her incremental. An extra magic item, so now I can finally use my butter knife. Yes! It's gonna come in handy. Max! I'm Max. I play Lucian, and I play Balrin. Um, both of them just took the um, ability score. So, uh, both of them actually only had an odd in Constitution, and so the other two points are... Just doing nothing right now. Perfect. There's always next time. I think we get one more yep. chance after this. Oh, okay. Um, and certainly, last, certainly not least, Seb. Uh, this is where the fireworks come out. Somebody gets hit in the eye with like a sparkler, and I just run past them with my arms up. I'm Seb. Uh, I'm playing Ash, the sorcerer. And Talus, the rogue ranger. And uh, I'm here today to eat uh, elven bread and take take names and I'm all out of all out of names. Alright. Um now when you guys left left off, you had the A team had managed to escape the ossuary. Um, by fighting a big, great undead dragon. When the dragon died, it was there was a item of unbeknownst effects left among the carcass, uh, seemingly tied to the magical aura of whoever was it would attune to it. Did you guys decide who's going to take that item? Uh, oh, I... right, right, the single use. You're just going to tell us. 
Like, yeah, I out. I was very adamant about taking it because I didn't want Talus to have it. Um, because Talus is is not a <laughs> sounds like a plan. <laughs> is not a A team member. As a reminder, that wow. is a plus two oh. bonus to save as a necklace. Um... Uh, Dane doesn't have a necklace. Uh, Leanne's keeping her necklace. Yeah, I don't. I don't currently have a necklace either. It would probably be best on Dame because she always seems to get stuck and has to roll save. That's true. Yeah, uh, no. That's but... true. My saves yeah. do suck. I but... will... She did get stuck in that bone wall for a little bit. <laughs> I will also you know... note that today is going to be a shopping session, among other things. So if you are looking for other necklaces of other effects, this would be the time to do it. Um, so I guess. No. Oh, and we're loaded. What? You're loaded with gold. Yeah. Oh, do they only take care here? Ah, fresh out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's move on. I think that just solved everything. So yeah, by end of session, I'd prefer that you guys pick someone to actually tune with it, or sell it, or trade it away, um, or you know, put it in the party bag. Like, but. It doesn't need to be resolved right now at this very moment. Now, the A-Team is not the only people who took Sanctuary here in this city at the end of a cave and the Stone Thief. Um, the Stone Thief has now submerged all of the other passageways and such that aren't sanctuaries have compressed to infinitely small spaces. All the Denzians of the dungeons have merged with its walls or gone back to their lairs of, you know, small pockets of safety. Um... And here you are, trapped in a compressed cave in a ramshack town, unlike the rest of the thief, which is made out of stolen palaces and castles and manors and tentaments and cities and villages, which were all empty of people. This is this place, this only place where you've seen other living, breathing, uh, warm-blooded humans is made out of no buildings. It's all just floatsome that's been fished up or scavenged materials like stone blocks, timbers um, harvested from the grove, scraps of clothing pulled off of the dead or undead. The entire town is just in a, a shanty town of lean-tos. There is only one building in the stone building in the entire town, a drum tower. Its battlements almost scraping the roof of the cave you're in. Um, you can see a couple, a couple bits of light up there from what seem to be lookouts. Uh, the entrance to this area, this end of the cave, was this giant set of um, ba battlements, a barricade, seemingly constructed out of. Um, the core of them seem to be big core behemoth shells, but warped almost, as if someone has like manually shaped them. And then just bits of wood and uh, stone and metal that have all been crammed in between to make it harder to get through. All Any number of old dead corpses, both of humans and monsters alike, from battles that have taken place at the battlements were crossed when you guys were ushered in as the cave closed in. Um, but they were, they're not trusting of outsiders. And so although you've been given a little stable to hang out with, you are under guard and they're trying to f and they're, they're gonna make sure that you're not like you know undead um, that are posing as humans or demons posing as humans or literally any other things that have been slipped into their town to try to rip it from the inside out. Um, they're amongst your stable around one of the only fires that you guys start yourself. The town is very dark outside of this. Most people are wa wandering around in the dim light. Uh, the A-Team finds they are not the only adventurers who have been ushered here under guard. Um, at one point, the meal that they cooked up from their full rest attracted a little snake slithering up from behind, um, accompanied shortly thereafter by a small baby's head looking for food. It is a baby Medusa. And moments after, a large hulking man, one you have met before, Haran of Stone Roost, comes running after it like, no, you stop that. That's their food. And that is where we'll open the scene. All of you are here. Oh. Harley is definitely yeah. chasing after the baby, too. <laughs> As a reminder, some of you have met, some of you haven't. Um, 
the B team even internally. Uh, Balrin is back, and I'm sure sitting as far away from them as possible. Um, Haran of Stone Roost has met the A team before, and there's Ash. <sighs> there he is. We found him. Oh uh, my God! T please tell me you have the eye. Ah. Uh... <laughs> Please tell me. <laughs> you know, it is a funny thing whenever you talk about eyes like that. I love when you talk about eyes. Did you know that you have very beautiful eyes? You got rid of the eye, didn't you? I absolutely launched that thing as far as I could. <laughs> oh, uh, now, did did you at least <laughs> cover it before you did that? I did not. Oh, I thought uh, no, you did. I did. I, thought I did. Really I did. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, I show, I show, uh, like, the missing part of my sleeve. I, uh, I did not need to see that to believe that you covered the eye. Thank you. I, I did. No, the opposite and a, of that. And, and a bald Lucian will... You can see, like, back. you can see, like, some super flaky gray skin that's, like, deep cracked and everything, and you're like, yep, got rid of it. Oh, yeah, Le Dufan has met the A-Team before, too, and is a good friend with Kalia and Leanne, I believe. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they, are, they are on baby duty right now. But Ash and uh, Le Dufan and Balrin are probably all... I mean, Balrin probably doesn't care too much, but, like, Lucian is just bald now. I, uh... I don't um, ask. I don't ask. I don't say anything. And Lucian yeah, also just has um, six... Bottles of high-end fine wine worth a, at least a platinum each on his body that have just been jingling around this whole run. Huh. Well, glad you made it, Ash. I'll hand him a bottle. Doesn't seem like there's much else to do around here. I'm gonna I'm gonna pop it open and and just start. Or Ash, since I'm playing two characters. Uh, I'm. At, yeah. See, I need to break out of that. Talus will run up to Lucian's side and be like, wait a second, how do we know they are who they say they are? Look. There was an entire room of faces and skeletons just earlier. This yeah, is well, our friend. His accent I would spot from anywhere. And he's no one dead to could redo part. it. I don't think the flesh tailor would make his skin so accurately disgustingly <laughs> oh, I take personal offense to that. Oh, you are essentially a walking corpse. Do not even try that. Yikes. Uh, I saw some shops. Maybe we can get you some moisturizer, Ash. And some clothes. But I know I know you're fond of those rags. So, uh, I, I did want to ask, though. Um, You've been traveling with all of these uh, people? Ah... Uh... The traveling together is such a strong phrase. More like we have been navigating. I have been leading them the well, the only way I knew through the, the stone thief. You, you, I was the, the one who called Caitlin and, and they were Lord an amazing resource here. paired alongside my amazing leadership. Wait a minute, is that open? Dang, I I haven't seen you since that party. Like, how many years ago was that, Dame? Like two years. What was it? Years? Yep. I don't know. I, Kalia, it was, it was before. That was before yeah. Parker oh, knew gosh, anything about you're right. Kalia. Yeah, that was. Wow, you know that was forever ago. Uh, I. Uh, party. People yeah, you, die. You, you might not remember, but it's the party where someone died. <laughs> I, I, I regret to say that that narrows it down very little. <laughs> oh, that's so. You know what? Honestly, I understand that. <laughs> you were paid to keep track of all of our names, and you greeted us at the door, and then you proceeded to read the rest of the party. <laughs> uh, 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 oh, right, that one. I, I I didn't realize that you it was you without that that, that lock, lock of hair that you had. Do you like this look better? Uh, uh, absolutely not. Oh, uh, you're more I'm honest worried. than I remember. <laughs> it, 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 
helps when you need to take care of a, a, a baby Medusa. Yeah, speaking of... That thing's dangerous by every normal instinct you would have. Uh, Grizz will just kind of sniff at it. Yeah, uh, don't don't get too close there. Uh, snakes have been uh, a little bit bitey. Uh, Harn's gonna kind of try and shoo uh, Grizz away. Yeah, Har- Harley <laughs> is <gonna> like <laughs> Harley is scooping the uh, scooping the baby up, uh, making sure to like put a hand in front of its face for the other you know people who would be I affected been... by it. You are running out of rats, if you recall. Um, someone ate them all. <laughs> no. Literally ate them all, so I'm sure in the interim I've I have summoned more rats for the child. That's true. And this is and this is exactly what I didn't want to happen when I summoned it the first time. If everybody remembers, roll again you... for how many Balrin has stolen and e- eaten. I'm going to snap your neck. Well, this is if I got away with it. <laughs> A 1d4? Do you really want to try a 1d4 against an occultist? Uh, I was just going to see if the GM would let me. I've already had some. I, you, you've only just like been sh- sh- um, joined here by everyone else. Uh, oh, I don't think you've had awkward, a sh- then. Yeah, Very it's real awkward. awkward. <laughs> Like you probably had your like your big shouting match like minutes before the A team got here, or at your own discretion, it hasn't happened yet, and you guys have just been like exchanging angry glances across the shelter you're in. That's uh, Ballin. Like it turns out that he never actually went the other way. He just like turned a corner and then he waited to see if we would follow, and then I came back. <laughs> <laughs> He saw that when giant forest and was just like, nah, I'm good. Hmm. Actually, Something in there is going to eat me. <laughs> <laughs> so... Oh, Pete. You, uh... You, you caused the... You were there for that. Still don't feel too good about that case. Uh, but, but bad cases. <laughs> No. Yeah, I suppose. And points go to uh, Leanne slash Opie for the uh, talking to yourself. But for the first talking to yourself. <laughs> hey, you think I haven't been thinking about this before? No, nothing wrong with it. It's it's just like I've been sitting here like, damn it. Okay, the only person that Haran probably recognizes here. Now that like Lucian is bald and stuff like that is the dame, but ooh, I don't. Mm. I, I tried to I do the. I would imagine Heron would know would be notice Leanne pretty well. Okay, all right, there we go. Cause like, yeah. Cause I feel like she's pretty. She's That's not true. someone you can just ignore. That's true. <laughs> so. About the eye, do you know if it's, like, gone? Like, if it was eaten, or what? <laughs> Ash? You guys stole an eye? Damn! Wow! You guys sure make our, uh... Our, you know, ad- adventures in, uh, in thievery look bad. The so eye of the snow, too. So, uh... No, that thing is long fucking gone. Hmm. Somewhere in the shadow port somewhere? Uh, so it's still back in shadow port? Did I look at it? I don't even know if it's strong. You're breaking up pretty bad there. Oh man. Robot Talus Ash. I heard the accent. I think it was Ash. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in that. <laughs> I 
Um. Oh no. All right. Well, if we all stick together, then there's probably okay. nothing that can stop us. Stop us from what? That's true. We've had from some... getting through. I mean, we're a lot stronger than we were before when we were here last time. I, I, I am under the impression that the Steve would not have allowed us to come back together if there was not something grand to kill us all. Well, does the thief even know about all this? As eyes everywhere. I actually, I think it is the. Well, I don't think he has eyes here. I think that's the whole thing. It's blind. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Uh, so how, how do we get out? Who who's ushering us? Or they already did. Yeah. Ushering. Oh. I uh, thought we were ushered in. Yeah, you are currently like that. They have sent off for someone else, and like you're just kind of sitting here under guard. No. While huh. someone else comes to do something, you're not sure what they said. Something about making sure you're really like real. That we're really real. That's a fair statement. That's a fair, fair take. Yeah. So, um, does that mean Lay Defend is out? No, Harley is trying to wrangle this squirming baby with snake hair and try and keep it from pulling at Dame's hair or poking someone in the eye or looking at someone in the eye and Harley's enjoying it. Right, let me go help with that. Leanne just steps away from the conversation. Time to pull out just like the smallest like hunk of meat she Give him the find. butter knife. Give him the butter knife. Uh, no, why? <laughs> no. She's just gonna go to, like, the leftover meal they had, pull out, like, the smallest bit of meat that she can find, and offer it up to the fucking Medusa baby. The, the Medusa baby has been eating, you said, has been eating rats? Yeah. Rats okay. captured by Ash. <laughs> Got it. Okay, I'm sure I'm sure uh the Medusa did we name we did. We named it. What is its name? Oh, it had a name, you're right. Uh we named it. Caroline. Nathara. What? I like Nathara. I like we named it Nathara. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I picked the name. Isn't there also uh, Harley a named it Nathara? <laughs> Aren't there, isn't there also a skeleton like just walking with you guys? Yeah. The bone servant. That's true. The skeleton dog. That's mine. No, he's not a dog. He's just a skeleton. Chris looks at him and just kind of salivates. You know how dogs will just have like drool dripping down. He'll just eyes locked on it and just drooling. <laughs> I think I think I think I was just like staring at this skeleton because of the thing you Yeah, we couldn't hear that again. You were breaking up. Now I know Lucian suggested while working together, but I feel like the B team really would kind of want to refuse to ever work with Balrin again. Uh, Harin in particular is a little bit ticked. Like, Harin likes a lot of the other people, but like, like you know, Ash and Opeed and, and La Dauphine and all of them, like, they've all fought valiantly together. And he thinks very highly of the A-team and what he's heard about them. But Balrin? Yeah, Harin does not trust this guy at all. Balrin doesn't, I, sorry, Harin doesn't really want Balrin even providing support. He doesn't trust him to really do anything positive in a fight at this point. Is he gonna say something to the rest of the group? Yeah, um... 
I mean, I guess, like, are we trying to take Balrin with us? Like, That's what Lucian suggested. All working together. Okay. All eight of you. I, yeah, no, everyone but the gargoyle boy. Uh. We can't count on him in a fight. Ooh. He r r ran from, from, from the, the minotaur. He refused to stay and help. To be fair, the I do have to agree. It, it, we, it, yeah, we all look at each other like uh, we literally all ran from it. All together, you didn't <laughs> abandon people fighting it. Ooh. Oh. I do agree that that was a little bit of a point of contention between us. Um, and I don't think he was too hot on, on uh, the baby either, which is, you know, that's just... How could you? Look at him! The baby I... just, like, smiles up and just, like, makes little giggling noises. Ash, the baby is, um... like, making a noise, like, uh, like, making a face. Like, she absolutely expects that diaper to be filled. Ash, uh, is, like, glad that the heat is on Balrin for not wanting the baby and not him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, you were the one Balrin. conjuring the rats. You know, you're right. Let's stuff. load back up the baby Medusa image real quick. <laughs> uh, look at it. Copyright 2017. Yeah. More importantly, what have you guys been doing to prevent this baby Medusa from accidentally turning nearby things in the stone? Well, that's why that's why Harley took over because Harley is already stone, basically. Didn't you Are you suggesting that, that canonically Forgeborn can't be turned to stone? I mean, that would make sense yeah, because I'm they're in. not a living creature. Yeah, Where, you know, didn't you, you also you? say? Didn't you also say that the baby wasn't old enough to do permanent petrification? Uh, so it does like little bits of petrification, like you saw little frogs turn to stone. You saw like little patches of people turn to stone. But right. It's not very but they it's like come frostbite. back. It's not. It's not permanent. It comes back. It wears off. No. 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 That's not true. No. 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 Not of the frogs and stuff like that, but of the people you talked about it. No, you found dead corpses just with little bits of the like. Dude, you literally when the fucking thing was opened up, went yeah. on and said specifically turned some of the skin to stone and then undid it giggling. You cannot backtrack on this one. I specifically remember that we detail. We have yeah. canon Shoot. on our side. Damn it, who established this canon? Fine, you're yeah. right. It's not a very strong effect and therefore it's just uncomfortable. Like, itchy skin. But you know but what? There's no moisturizer also... in the stone feet. There's no baths. It's really uncomfortable, damn it. But you have to teach a baby manners, you know? We can't just be going around turning people to stone. So I think Harley uh, and Nathara have gotten really good at playing, like, long rounds of peekaboo. Like, okay, time to close your eyes and keep them closed until I say peekaboo. Um, and, uh, and also just, you know, like, um, fashionable headdresses. Harley is, you know, really into fashion. So I think they would find, like, scraps of fabric or something and make, like, a cute little bandana to wrap around the baby's eyes so that it can't look at anybody. <laughs> Viewers uh, who have small children might, might be, you know, having flashbacks trying to get their children to wear masks during this pandemic. And I just hope yeah. that we, you know... Yeah. <laughs> this blindfold thing's definitely going to work better than that, I'm sure. But it's like a really fashionable, really comfortable blindfold. I don't know if babies care about things like if it's fashionable <laughs> or not. I don't know if they have I a mean, sense Harley of... I mean, Harley cares. Harley is not going to have their child looking a mess, okay? They're going to have the nice clothes, nice hair. They're going to be those babies that have, like, baby, like, Jordans. Like, you know, like the baby size sneakers? Yeah, that's Harley as a parent. <laughs> this is a game right. we want it. Very well. <laughs> we actually probably have the best group for it above the surface. <laughs> what? And then like, we have an entire tribe of, like, all right, so you're kind of have some sort of problem, but you seem generally benign. We have centaur, or not centaurs, uh, what is it? What are they called? Stars? Satyrs? Satyrs. 
We have satyrs. We have bear orcs. We got phoenix. We got three-headed dogs. We got all werewolves. We <laughs> I almost forgot about them. They almost seemed normal. <laughs> like, <laughs> we got yeah, a real uh, uh, werebears. Yeah, we Wait, got. Actually, maybe we shouldn't mention that we have a gargoyle. Why? <laughs> but... Yeah, because Haran's gonna want to kill it. Uh, but <laughs> Not we don't know that. <laughs> That's true, you don't know that. You did call the dragon a gargoyle, but that could have just been a regular insult. <laughs> it is at this point unclear. Does Okay, I sorry, I have a question because I still have the concept art up. Is that baby, does they have like an earring? Gauges? <laughs> yeah, that kind of looks like gauges. That's just bad parenting. You know, That's just bad parenting. <laughs> Also, those bangles, that, like, wrist thing it's wearing, that's a choking hazard. Yeah, seriously. Okay, really, we did a good thing by taking it out of the but box. But doesn't it have, like, a belly like a snake? Like, can't it just, like, swallow anything? Well, here's the thing also you gotta remember. That baby was basically put into a time stasis, so, like, can you be a bad parent if your baby's just in a permanent stasis? And are you even still a parent it. at that point, or are you, like, pause that responsibility? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think that morally speaking, pausing the, the the child in time is cruel to say the least. You're but, saying that like, it's cruel if they're in the but no, but no further action after that can really, you know, I, I mean, you could un immediately undo it, and I guess like that would be like. Well, maybe you only get half as much negative karma. I don't know. Is this relevant I mean, to the feel game? Sure, That's why not? I, w I really <laughs> hope this is a conversation that part of you guys are having in character. Like, what you found in a box, is that ethical? Is that good parenting? <laughs> well, we our saved got some practice. from a bad situation. We're like, we're like social workers, you know? We, 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 we are not. That is the last thing that we are. This helpless, adorable You're actually child, the cause of a lot and, of unrest. And we took this adorable child actually out of that if we want to go situation. back in time far enough the whole situation that we're in sort of because of you guys was it, was it a bad situation no uh, like ash is like you have guys have told me numerous times that like you had a friend and you took that guy specifically to the court to, and like he killed somebody you started the war <laughs> For friends a strong term yeah but yes, we were there for the assassination. Dame had. I think you guys morning. need a better screening process if you're going to be. If I'm going to be honest here, and Talus in the background is like, I agree. Oh, look who's talking! The two latest additions. Oh, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of new additions to a lot of people. Look, we just ended up with with him. You know, he was he was just who was sent. To bodyguard me, like that, that we didn't exactly. There wasn't exactly an interview process, right? He was just like drafted. That's that seems problematic. Look, that whole situation was a big, uh, unfortunate circumstance, and frankly, a black mark on my career. What they were doing wasn't right, but I guess at the same time they did hold the right person. Just a lot of innocent ones, too. Yeah, so... but, you know, we've all learned and grown since then. And, you know, I... <laughs> Now, now you've taken on the responsibility of taking care of a baby Medusa. That's uh, just jumping into the parenting there. No, nope, okay. I didn't know. Hey, I've done this before. Don't question me. I've Adam? babysat lots of children. There are lots of children in Shadowport that have noble parents that don't want to take care of them while they eat dinner. Okay, yeah, but then you give the kid back after dinner. No, this is my kid now! I don't give her back after dinner! 
So okay. is this baby Medusa? We'll hand to him one of the wine bottles. Thank you. Don't <laughs> drink Lucian. He's already like almost done with this first one. <laughs> I appreciate the jester though. I wanted to ask, um, we fought a Medusa beforehand. Is this that one's kid? She didn't seem like she had a kid. No, didn't, but... I can't imagine there's that many Medusas within the Stone Thief, right? When uh, the uh, B-team fought the Medusa, the Medusa was an undead Medusa. Harren's gonna pipe up and be like, uh, undead Medusa, kind of a big maze situation, sort of some harpies, some pillars. Ringing undead. a bell. Undead. Oh, she was resurrected then. Did we Whoa. kill this kid's mom, Leanne? Yeah, I think we did. Sounds Ugh. like it. I'll try to hand Kalia a wine bottle. Yeah, I'll take that. Kalia, is it a red or a white? Uh, it's a, a sweet white, actually. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. It, 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 it probably tastes better chilled, but, you know, we don't have mm -hmm. any any refrigeration down here. No, you, you do not. It was chilled when you got it, but, you know, it's kind of been in Lucian's folds of his cloak and such. It, it's oh, up. don't call them folds. Please. The Spare pockets. me. Po the inner pockets of his Deep cloak. pockets. <laughs> oh, Galia, we should see about finding you some new enchanted armor. Yeah, it's still a little sticky in the corners. Well, a new pair of armor uh, handles that. Maybe one that's a bit better fitting. All right, um, you oh, guys. Uh... Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say. So, uh, you guys were talking about uh, that thing over there being a traitor. Balrin. Yeah. He's got a name. Balrin. Yeah, he, uh... He... he, he, he left us for... dead. Balrin just kind of sneers. Says, I'm only here out of necessity, Earth Dwellers. Just like you. I don't want to be with party with you. You're all thieves. Going after mother's treasure. I, I, I am a researcher. Yeah, I actually kind of like these guys. Harley covers the baby's ears and says, <laughs> How dare you! I literally witnessed you guys plot to take the treasure from Dr Drakenhall. You can't deny this. Hmm? Are you accusing us of that? Uh, Balrin recognizes the A-team. Yeah, well, Balrin betrayed the B-team. But, you know, oh, Ash was part of that. Of... I, you know. <laughs> Here's the thing. Balrin, was it? It's many names. It's Wind and Fire. Balrin will suffice. Yeah, I've heard people with more names before. Here's the deal. You ever think that we were there for reasons other than stealing a bunch of gold? You think I would have let that just happen? I thought it was odd to see one of the Dragon Empire's... Legislator. What do you call your legislator? You know what? You're one of the closest that's come to it. That's come to being one of you? No, pronouncing it properly. E your tongues are strange and not forked. But I trust that you know... <laughs> You're not the, wrong. Uh, they are not forked. <laughs> that I shan't be stricken down on no merit, since we have a legislator. And I am a sentient being, and by those accords, though I may look like something, you may just 
discard and slay as you go? I assure you, no one here will kill you, but... If you tried. Here's the thing. You're accusing us of going in through with that theft, but... Well, considering anyone of value uh, about that conversation is either somewhere in this stone thief, not here presently, or on the surface, I think it is safe to say we weren't going to be doing that. But your friend didn't deny it, and why else do you need the eyes if not for treasure? Slaughter. They We're killing the stone, the stone thief. thief. Yeah, something, something stopping the world from ending. Something, something. Why wasn't this mentioned? I brought this. I asked you guys about this so many times. Look, Ash is Ash? not great with the communicating. I think well. Ash purposefully tries to be as obtuse and stubborn as possible because he gets some sick thrill from it. I have a bad combination of magic items on me. What? Oh yeah, blame the magic items, okay. No. I look at the spell sworn... book in my hands. <laughs> sworn on your emperor, and he'll look at Lucian's priestess sign, and, and the priestess that... <laughs> that's what you guys were trying to do? Absolutely. I wouldn't besmirch the emperor in such a way. Dwarf King. Mm. I'm well, not the best person I've... to ask about that one. I don't really have any uh, yeah, anyone to swear, swear to. By? Yeah, I don't know. Land. Your maker. You swear on land. Yeah, life? yeah, sure, sure. There you go. I'm not sure I want you swearing on my reputation, Kalia. It's not your reputation, it's just your livelihood. Yeah, that's the same thing. <laughs> oh, well, oh. there's your problem. It <laughs> Here's we like have to separate, you separate your like breath from your reputation. You know that's how I've made it this far. Well, tailless ones, it appears we have a similar goal, as Mother has tasked me with destroying the stone thief, so it can never be used against Darken Hall. I'm fine with letting him stay if anyone else, if everyone else is. I don't want him at my back, Harlan says. Yeah, uh Harley Harley is um again covering the, the baby's ears. Um he's not allowed to stay at the back of the pack or else he's gonna run away again. He he he, he ate Bellroy! I saw him eat Belroy. Oh, boy. Wait, Lu Lucian. This is Lucian. Wh wh who's Belroy? <laughs> My precious astral ant friend that I gave him as a gift, and he ate it. Rest in peace, Belroy. He deserved so much more. He did. He did. I have to say I didn't know <laughs> when you gave it to me. I thought it is custom to give food as a gift. I... And, little oh, one, I... I did try to save you from the Minotaur. You... It's an ant! What kind of meal is that? You've been feeding rats to the fuck... to the baby. <laughs> the, the baby <laughs> eats rats! That's a meal to a baby! <laughs> Grizz and Lucia literally eat milk bone. <laughs> People don't eat that well. We're adventurers! What are we else are we supposed to eat? We eat dirt and pebbles! Yeah, I'm starting to realize that Leanne's value is mostly in making sure everyone isn't malnourished. <laughs> I do yeah, apologize, sorry. little one. I didn't realize it was a friend of yours. Well, you can make it up to Belroy by finding me a colony. A, a new species, too. Maybe Mother can help. 
Uh, I ha ha haven't checked Dragon Hall for her Astrolands yet. Lucian will drunkenly whisper to Dame, H have we killed this person's parents too? I forget, we we've killed a few oh, dragons before. Which one? Oh, uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, okay. Are you sure about that? I no. mean, yeah, okay, well, okay. I or just go on with no. no. Are you guys all full? I pull out another bottle and shake it. I think okay. I confiscate that one. Go for another round, Lucian. Don't, don't, yeah, don't. yeah. Just pass it over here. All right. We're having a drink. And for the first time in a while, Callie and Lucian are being okay together. <laughs> <laughs> Only when there's alcohol involved. It's literally been years <laughs> without hostility. <laughs> All right, I think now's a great time. Um, the person that they sent for has finally shown up. It is, based on the tattered clothing, a cleric or paladin of some kind. Um, she is fairly small, taller than a dwarf, but, you know, like five feet. And she is going a party member to party member and being like, excuse me, I need a test to make sure you're not a demon or undead. Um, and assuming you guys ac acquiesce, she's touching a holy symbol to each of your guys' foreheads and murmuring a small prayer. Is uh, it a priestess thing? It's a priestess thing. Oh, okay. uh, it burns! Uh. <laughs> yeah, Leanna's well, going to be very uncomfortable about it, but I she'll deal with it. All of you pass, none of you, like, you know get sear seared by the holy magic and such but when she touches it to Kalia's forehead it glows a swirl of different hues of white some amber some bright white some cool white and it just like flies out of the cleric's hand and into the ground and she's like oh dear priestess above hey hey hey, hey. Don't, your don't business. take that as don't take that as like anything I'm like you know attached to okay uh, Does it test the walking skeleton? <laughs> oh, the walking skeleton <laughs> has just been, like, behind two additional guards because they know it's undead, but, like, it's it's a super weak undead, right? The, well, one of them could just push it over and it would just, like, fall. Um, When the cleric picks back up the symbol, it's warped shape slightly. And where it once was like a different bright god, um, it looked like a, of uh, the harvest. It is now the bright god of fertility symbol. And she's like, how did, what? We don't ask questions around here. It's answers you don't want or need, really. You know, Kalia, I think I preferred you before you got related to the uh, bright gods. Again. Yeah, me too. Um, and she goes back to the guards and they murmur low and you can't quite hear um, what they're saying. Except, of course, Lucian with his much night better ears than anyone has any right to believe he has. And he catches snippets of words like, they check out, but I'm not sure if the provost would approve. Um, it's another delay of time later as they send off a messenger. Um, and as eventually someone shows back up again and is like, Adventures, the provost, he who shelters this town, would like to speak with all of you. Oh, good. Well, who am Let's I to deny a summons? Follow me, please, and stay orderly. Is this someone specific to, like, this is not a name we would have heard before, correct? You might have heard, you've heard Cat Wind of the Provost. Uh, orcs have mentioned him in fear before. Um, slaves, some of the slaves mentioned him as like a hopeful figure that they might encounter if they were to ever escape and have heard some people escape to the protection of. Okay. Got so it. So we're expecting him to generally be a good guy. Um, you get walked through a dungeon town. Um, it is a very dim and dark area. 
Um, there's very few lights. It's just big draping shadows uh, everywhere. Um, a lot of the light is being provided by like items that naturally glow or captured, you know, luminous insects or moss that you know has been shoved into crevices to provide some basic illumination. None of these buildings look like they would hold up to you know more than a bit of battering and bruising before they collapse. Uh, many of the people who wander past are clearly blind or half blind from just living in the cave in the dark for so long. Some are holding unlit candles as if they're precious you know items others the the ones wearing nicer clothes among them actually have a lit flame to gu guide them as they go um it appears light is the uh, currency of choice around here um you get oh, taken man. you get taken to the uh, only stone building in the entire area, the um, tower that is nearly brushing the top of the ceiling, and uh, get ushered up, you know, um, to the third floor. Uh, as you pass through the tower, you can see that there's various weaponry, um, daggers and halberds and spears and crossbows and arrows upon arrows uh, on the walls, not as decoration, but there so that at a moment's notice they can be grabbed you can see scrape marks along the walls and the hooks from where they hang these weapons have clearly been grabbed in a rush plenty of times before and will be again um you get entry you walk in and there is a man with a very long um staff uh wearing armor and a cape it is the provost uh, he's sitting at a long table, one of the only like in one piece tables in all of Dungeon Town. But he does not use this for feasts, but instead for meetings and battle plans. Um, he is a stoic figure, uh, and he reminds Kalia very much of the Crusader. The Crusader is a man of fire and steel, but the Provost is more cold and stone. Um, he rules like he has an iron will that is hard to bend and has seen many many battles balrin can recognize this spear and connect it pretty quickly to the um custodian he saw in the grove that had been struck down and smashed by various um blood impacts it looks like the provost at one point had battled and defeated a custodian of the level his cold eyes stare across from you from the table as you all um, sit down. Quite a number of people to be in here, uh, but he ushers his guards out with a wave, and it's just uh, the eight of you, Angers, and uh, him. Hey, uh, looking, or, Lucian will just look around. We're still armed, right? You're still armed. And to, what's our adventurer sense of him? He is quite strong. Why would you even consider fighting this man? I don't. I just wanted to see, like, <laughs> is this a brave person or no? Like, he just feels super comfortable facing eight level six people fully armed and rested up. Um, so. The Provost is a triple strength ninth level NPC. Amazing. Yeah, let's not pick a fight. Yeah. Okay. okay. Hi. He does not re let respond, and he just stares across the table, his fingers interlocked, his eyes cold, as he just considers all of you slowly in turn, turning from Talus, and he pauses, to Haran, and then on to Opin. And the staring goes on, as it, and you feel as if he's reaching inside of you with those eyes, unearthing the truths that you would prefer to keep hidden. When he looks Talia at is like is mirroring it <laughs> right back at him. Uh, an empty bottle will fall out of Lucian's lap as he looks at Lucian. <laughs> it shatters and <laughs> disrupts the quiet of the room, but he does not flinch and continues staring. I'm gonna do kind of that like that closed eyes thing where you just know that it's like, oh, she thinks she's too cool to roll her eyes, so she just kind of closes them and makes the face instead. Like that's any better. <laughs> 
After a long mm. moment and the and the this cold, cold gaze as if a knife blade in winter, um, he finally speaks and it almost startles the room with the you know back like he's finally uh, going from quiet gazing to speaking and he's like, so. A more interesting group of adventurers I could not imagine. We have, and he gestures, and Azamir turned away from her deities, a werewolf in control of his own lycanthropy. A tiefling turned to lawful good. An opera singer from a dwarf. An ancient first stage Arcanite. A forge born with a personality. And he just continues like pointing to each of you. You have no idea how he knows this information. Pretty good idea. He's obviously a fan. I'm not playing poker with this guy. <laughs> Tell me why I should allow you to remain within my walls. Currently, I don't think you have too much of an option. Like, we will gladly leave as soon as this emergence is over, but... I could no leave thing. you to the uh, caves outside our walls, which have not yet compressed. You could fend for yourself among the animals that have not fused with this thief. We have a baby, please, sir. Yes, you bring a monster inside my walls that can turn others to stone. I know of the threat you have brought within. Yes, but we also have a baby. And I sort of like put a hand on Lucian's shoulder. Like, it's okay. You're not a monster. <laughs> it Smile. He... Just go with it. His cold <laughs> eyes just like turn to Ash. Or was it Talus? It's hard to tell. I think it was Ash. The easier to slay while it's weak. But a powerful take... ally if raised properly. Could you ima uh, imagine h how much research he could get done as my understudy? Ah, uh, yes. Let me take it to my finest research facility here in the bowels of the Stone Thief. I am sure I have plenty of food and time on my hands while my walls get battered from assault after assault. Yes, this war with the Stone Thief we fight surely leaves me with the ample time and resources to tend to a monster. What, where, 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 we, we, Posing I'll take over. We're not staying here. We'll take the monster and ourselves out of your city, out of your responsibility as soon as this emergence ends. We're after a place to sleep, not your resources. You may remain, and he holds up a single finger, for one sleep. If you were to stay longer, you must accept the laws. There are not many, but they are strong. What laws are they? Let's hear them. He, uh... Transfers the one finger, like, you know, from one hand to the next, and one, serve as you are able. Two, don't weaken the town. And three, no lies of hope. Lies of hope. Can you elaborate? Some lucky few have found exits back to the surface. It's true. Certainly it's not impossible. Nothing in this earth is impossible. But... It is dangerous. The average the average man will either end up slain, his guts disemboweled, or in slavery to the orcs or other creatures. It is not worth the murmurs of hope that one may escape. It is easier and safer for all of the inhabitants within to just stay behind the walls where it is safe, where we may one day hope that the thief itself is slain. Were we to try to escape, it would just be a massacre. I will not have these whispers of freedom lead them to their deaths or enslavement. If you're interested in having the stone thief slain, then perhaps just between us, we might be able to have a conversation. 
You see, we do hope to slay the stone thief. We have been doing research with the resources available to us in the outer world. And while we can respect your rules and stay quiet about our quest within these walls, any help that you might be able to give us would be much appreciated. You are free to attend to your own doom in this task, but you must leave others to find their own fates. We can respect that. Mostly what I speak of is being able to ask some questions of you of and others of what they do know about the Stone Thief. Not to encourage them to go out on their own. You may ask me th these questions you so wish. But please, the people here, it would be best if they not even be inquired about the, the state of their horrid existence. Best let them get drunk at the local tavern. We'll leave them Lucian out of hiccups. <laughs> we can leave them out of it. <laughs> what can you tell us about the surrounding areas? Uh, or the... He pulls out a map and he starts like pointing out. Here we are. End of the cavern. Dungeon town. Not a... Not a very interesting name, but is the one we have. There, and he points um, to number three. These are the shaped shells of Kor Behemoth, the great beast that wander the overland. We know not why, but the stone thief seems un incapable of digesting these pieces, and they act as a great cavern, holding up the nearby area, preventing it from being um, collapsed upon. This is where... If you do not impress upon me why you should stay, you will end up after one sleep. Furthermore, outside of there, there are old chapels and a library. We have sent some scouts out to these areas. Uh, and the library has some guards, but we believe it contains some information that could be valuable if only those guards were defeated. And finally, the Darrow Caves. Dwarves gone mad or corrupted, we're not sure which. But they have laid deadly traps in this area. I mean, that just sounds like a normal dwarf to me. To you? Like, we have you the mushroom have... forest. This is we go where we send foraging staff to go gather some occasional food. How interested would you be in having those guards defeated at the library and being able to go there yourselves regularly? It would be a boon. How do we feel, everybody, about slaying some librarian guards in order to help the whole city i see no harm in exchange... not to be rude but huh? why haven't you gone out there i can tell that you know, you're you're battle trained i hope it's not rude of me asking but what stops you from going to take on some library guards when I first was submerged in the thief, I spent many, many sleeps battling for my life, finding and losing allies, slaying monster after foe after beast after undead. Eventually, a multi crew and I found this safe cavern and slowly built up a groups. We would venture out into the thief, trying any time it submerged, trying to find survivors and as the, as the town grew, as we went from single digits to double digits, it became more and more um, pressing upon the thief that it may eradicate us from where we stand. We are abhorrent to it. Should I leave town, I fear that it will come under attack and I will not be here to defend it. I will come back to find all that I have built and all that I have protected for all this time gone again. Once I even slayed a great custodian of the thief, thinking, and that is why we can wander around the grove and fell timbers to use for construction materials, but it's still a dangerous place even so. <coughs> Those adventures are past me, however. So if we were to slay the librarian, the, the guardians at the library for you, would that be enough service to the city of Dungeon Town? Town of Dungeon Town, whatever you know you want to call yourselves, 
for us to be able to stay more than one sleep if ne necessary. Accepting our three laws are all that I require for you to stay. I would not twist my own words in order to, you know, pull value out of you. But were you to clear these guards, knowledge is, after all, power. I would make it worth your while. Credit to trade at the local town. We pull in quite a number of old trinkets and items and armor and weapons um, when we sort and pillage, uh, plunder. Uh, or some of our few stock of healing potions and oils. I think that sounds like a deal. What do we think, guys? If we help them out in exchange, we can at least get Callia some armor that isn't covered in tar? Sure. I will remind you of Law 2. Do not weaken this town. I do not care if you get drunk uh, and he gestures to Lucian um, on your own supply or on that of the local tavern, the lobster's pot. I do not care if you sleep or intoxicate or uh, t take par partake in frivolities. But when the horn calls, he points up at the top of the building to, you know, the watcher is up there. I expect you to be able to fight at that moment, regardless of the just... state you're in. Wouldn't that fall within Law 1 more than 2? He gives, like, a slight incremental shrug. You can handle that. Coming to the aid of people under siege is, uh... Frankly, far too common for me. This isn't anything, though. As you like, consider, like, Lan, I think, would piece together why he quoted Law 2, not Law 1. He is warning against you guys spreading the influence to others of getting more drunk than they're capable of serving after, or, you know, <laughs> distracting them too much. I think I understand, but. I'll make sure that at least some of us that sold their hair off keeps themselves at a functioning degree. See to it that you do, and you shall find safety in these walls. Don't worry about me, folks. I'm, I'm out. Out? You're good? Or what? I just raise the empty bottle and shake it with a frown. Oh, good. How many of those did you drink within? Don't answer that. When's the next time we're going to get where we're surrounded by the just actually safe? The surface? The manor? That could be months. Years. I think you severely underestimate a solution. I just think it was uh, time to relax a little bit. Besides, I really didn't want to carry around a six bottles of wine and you, do the rest of you this. You sold your hair for money, and you didn't even think of selling off the wine? I don't even remember well, how I got this. Yet. The wine came after. Yeah, worth every penny, though. <sighs> and I didn't drink it myself. You drink. Looks at Calia, Leanne. <laughs> I didn't even touch or, it. Sorry, Dame. Oh, I, the Dame definitely has Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah, no, we'll be good. We can take we care of that. We will follow your laws. We will strike down the fellows within the library. And if that is all, I would like to tend to certain assets. Hey, Kay, I want to go shopping. <laughs> 
he he gives you all one last considering look. May you find your way back to Dungeon Town. And just nods his head. Thank you. Yep. Uh, right, Kalia, come on, let's find you something that doesn't reek. Yeah, let's do that. Um, as you guys exit the tower, you wander, you're, you're free to wander around of your own accord. The guards let you be, um, you see various lean-tos and tents and shacks where the Denzians live. No two alike. All of them have been cobbled together by what they can. Um, some are nicer than others, of course. Um, there's some empty shelters that have been pre-constructed for when people can come to town, is your optimistic thinking. A pessimist might think that they are no longer occupied. Um... As you meander through town, you pass a fairly strange home as you get towards the center-ish of town, if you can really call it the center. Um, it is a di giant dire snail, but it, the snail is live and just like slowly like sl munching on some sort of fungus in a bucket. And the shell has been turned into a small tower um, further into town, there's a, one of the few lit signs says the Lobster Pot Inn, and one t uh, street of the town seems to be the Market, which has some of the only um, actual lighting. The other streets are, like, completely dark. Uh, but the Market has a couple um, stalls that have lights outside of it, including one of which that seems constructed better than the rest that has lanterns. Yeah, it looks so big. Right now. So, where do you guys want to go? Is the inn not where we're staying? Oh, if you are not assigned any place to sleep, no. I want to go to the inn, then. See if they have a space. I'm gather my robes and, like, move quickly behind her. The lobster <laughs> pot inn, um... It is, it is a strong word. It's a single fire, tend it to, um, surrounded by people uh, getting drunk and telling tales. Um, they have a single menu. You can either have mushroom stew or surprise stew, uh, as well as a single distilled spirit nicknamed the Provost Piss. Um, oh, promising. That's promising. There are no rooms. Um, there are just, like, you can see some people have just collapsed in the back on some, uh, like, pieces of um, linen or hay and such. Oh! And the people who can see look up to, like, see you as you come in. Uh, but plenty are just blind. <laughs> okay, it's this type of inn. Uh-huh. think we would find better odds of findings a more suitable resting location outside is there like someone tending the pot of surprise stew or yeah there's two pots one is just the mushroom stew and the other is a surprise stew but no one is like stirring the pot I mean, the person tending it is, like, giving it the occasional stir every now and then. Someone shows up with, like, new ingredients and it just kind of gets dumped in. Okay. Is the surprise uh, stew the same color as the mushroom stew? Like, you can, <laughs> like, if you look, they don't really, like, it's hard to see, right? It's dark. Um, but it looks like there's also mushrooms floating around in there from the fungal forest that he mentioned. But, like, there's other unidentifiable bits and bobs. So it's not just the same stew. It's not, no. There looks like there's some kind of meat, maybe some vegetables, some fish. Uh, it's it real. It's hard to identify what those bits are, though. Yeah, um, Kali is just gonna walk up to whoever is like cooking. I'm assuming that's whoever is running this area. Um, hey, welcome say... to the Lobster Pot and Finest in this side of the Stone Thief. 
I love, love the establishment you got going on here. Uh, Thanks. It's been in my family for 30 sleeps. Oh, wow. Wow. A family affair. Mm. Y y you got room for some uh, adventurers? He stares at the pot, the surprise Sue's pot. Uh, I could probably make some. Oh, oh, yeah. We got a couple of hay bales in the back. Mm hmm. <laughs> Cool, yeah, I'm, we're just gonna go put our stuff down. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Talia, we're, I'm an adventurer. Don't we're, tell me your name, hon. I, you're just, you're just not, you're not gonna come back. It's gonna make me sad. It's, it's fine. Right, right. Okay, so. Isn't, you know, um, isn't 30 sleeps like a month? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Depends on how often you sleep that's true yeah honestly my first thought when we were told we could only stay for one sleep was fantastic so we're not sleeping right guys yep. go as long as you can that's exactly what i thought too well callie is gonna lay out her bedroll um and you know stake a, a little spot and um don't worry uh, if the light's bothering you, you know, bother a lot of the people with the eyes going, you know, it gets real sensitive. Don't worry, lights out will be in another, um, well, I mean, time's hard to tell around here. It's like another chunk of time. We're, like, getting there. We're on the later half of the sleep. Do you guys, like, not have anything to burn? He points at the fire. Yeah, we get occasional things. Not much, though. We use most of the wood for construction. And he, like, thumps his fist against the uh, beam next to him. Like, it creaks and bends a little bit. And, like, dust and the uh, debris fall from the ceiling. He's like, oh, a little too hard. <laughs> yeah, well, calm down there. It's like a growth industry. I mean, you know, maybe if you're lucky, the next... Uh... Newcomer to Dungeon Town will be a lumberjack or a carpenter. <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be great. We've got old Sammy, but like he he was doing a good job until he lost his right hand to like an attack. You know, just a big great old beast bit it off. He was starting to learn his left hand too, and then that got gnawed off by a zombie. Uh, tragic stuff. Mm. No kidding. Uh, how's he taking it? Oh, he, he's not taking it anymore. Ah. I see. Do you know... Oh. Do you know, know if anyone trades, like, regular traveling food? Like bread or dried meats or anything? Oh, he just, like, takes a, a big deep breath. Like, oh, I don't think you're going to get bread down. You might get some tack. That stuff tends to stay. Every now and then when the stone thief just ate an area, we might get, like, some fresh food, and that though it gets picked over real fast. Um, but, you know, if there's anyone who's going to have anything you're looking for, it's good old Darren Half an Inch. Excuse me? Darren um... Half an Inch. He's, he's a dwarf. He runs the fine half an inch higher stall down the you know down the way you can't miss it it's the one with real lanterns and he can keep them lit the guy must be rolling rolling in it right right half an inch huh okay uh uh you know i'm leave visit him I'm mighty hungry. Uh, oh, he slaps the, the surprise a... pot in front of him. Boy, do I got a stew for you. Here, here. Uh, he pulls like a dirty bowl that like wipes it with his fingers. Let me serve you up. It's going to be like, what do you, what do you got that's worth trading? Um, I, uh, I have this half drank bottle of wine. Oh, that is incredible. And he just whoa, takes it whoa. and... It, it's already gone. He's like, you don't know where he disappeared <laughs> to. It's gone. And he's no, like, I'll no. give, I'll give bowls for a whole crew. Tell, you, your pick: surprise stew or mushroom stew. 
Yeah, what's your recommendation? You yeah, what do you recommend, huh? What's oh. on the menu here? Oh, I'm asking Leanne. <laughs> the lobster pot specialty is a surprise stew. Why do you well, think we I got am, the name? I am, I am all one for trying a local delicacy, so I will have a pot, a, a, a bowl of the special stew. Um, I'm sure my friends here would prefer mushroom. I've tried worse from a skeleton bartender. I'll give the surprise stew a shot. I'll have what Leanne's having. I will also have I what would Leanne's wait having. until I taste it, guys. Fair enough. He oh, serves up a single upgrade. bowl and shoves it over to Leanne. It is chunky and stewy and dark and just mystery bits and bobs are floating about it. Mm. There are some mushrooms in there too. Mm. Mm. Alright. Alright. Hang on now. Uh, you want to make this actually useful and delicious? I think it's high time I show you something, then. I'm saving these for a rainy day. Oh no! Actually, do you? I'm like nudging one of the one of the people in rags. I'm like, besides myself, and I'm like, oh no! Look, he, she actually knows what she's doing. All right, I'm popping my emperor. She makes it. She she makes a chili that could make you breathe fire. Mm, that story probably would have been told to me. All right, Emperor Six. Okay. The animal stands up, heads to the pot, and she digs for her pouch and pulls out a small, well wrapped container with the emperor's the Empire symbol emblazoned upon it. This is her special uh, like emergency food supply that she keeps on hand. And she will, and I want to use that and use uh, the meats within it and the spices to zest this stew up into something real special. You're doing this with a whole pot and not just your bowl, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, you add more things to this pot, and he doesn't stop you. He literally doesn't care. Um, the soup smells, the stew smells better. There's better quality ingredients in there. Some of them are actually identifiable as things that you would actually want to eat. Um, it's all mixed in with the rest, of course, but, like, it certainly seems more palatable now. Well, this is the best I can do with the current circumstances. And now we eat the mystery stew. Still wasn't worth half a bottle of wine, Kalia. It was warm. I wasn't going to finish it anyway. All right. Our good times together, over. We're back. We're back to it. <laughs> so, to confirm, everyone enjoying a, a bowl of surprise stew. Leanne, Lucian, the Dame, Kalia. What about yeah. Ash and Haran and Talus and Balrin and Lady Fun? Who Harley may have split up? Harley is trying off? to find rats. Harley is trying to find rats for themselves and the baby. There are no rats whatsoever in this entire inn. Odds are they've already been hunted and added to the state. That is Let's true. be honest. Uh, Opie <laughs> is That's pretty funny. Just, he's sitting over where Galia set up her bedroll and is just writing in his book. He's not eating currently. Can he see? Look, can he see? He is an astral ant researcher. He just asks Penelope to read for him, okay? That's true. I thought he was writing. You gotta read what you wrote, you know, before a nice cross reference, you know? Anyway, yeah. so those four people, if you're having the stew, each of you roll a d20 for me. Just a flat d20. That? Ooh. 
Ooh. Oh, Talus does not react well to this dude. Oh, 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 you oh, roll for Talus, too. All right, Kalia, you get bits of sanguine in your stew, um, as, long with, as well as the spices and meat that um, Leanne put in. Uh, Leanne, you get bits of red cap in yours, along with the rest. Lucian, you get just like the nice bits Leanne put in. It's quite tasty. Um, Ash does as well, but Talus, Talus gets something that makes him like reach a bit and like, oh. Oh. And and the cook's like, hey, don't let Sammy go to waste, bud. And the dame uh, gets a oh. bit of sea shark. Sammy? Did you say Sammy as in Samuel, as in a person named Sam? You couldn't do uh, woodworking no more. Oh. No. Oh. Hey, hey, don't and jump just there, like, young. This no is a, law number this is one. A serve delicacy. as you're able, bud. I, uh, uh, uh... Actually, just like, what did you say this was again? This is amazing. <laughs> Where can I get more Sam? Well, we've had bone marrow before. This isn't that different. This is just a very advanced form of a bone broth. Just look at it that way. Not bad, Leanne. Don't worry about Talus. He's a he's a, he's a bit skinny. I think he's he's a bit picky. Don't tell him I said that. He I... seems a little fussy sometimes. Well, I'm glad to tell him. As Lu Lucian's like picking out a bit of cobalt from his teeth. <laughs> All right, so Kalia. I'd give you guys a recovery, but like you're full, so I. <laughs> I, I... Uh, do we get like a plus two on a roll? You know what? Tell tell you what, Ooh. you'll get uh, if you remember, if you remind me, your next recovery, you get to uh, what's the option called? The cook of uh, you get to uh, roll it as if it were a champion tier potion. Damn! That was a good usage of a six. So, Kalia. Are you going to be retiring already, or shall we, uh... Just you know, that stew hands. really, uh, really energized me. I don't know about the rest of you guys, I'm feeling great. Probably the wine. Hey. Yeah, let's yeah. go, Leo. Oh, yeah. Anyone else who wants to come sleep. visit the dwarf? I want to come visit Half an dwarf. inch. Name, they're going on a date. Oh, are they? Read the lines. Um, but it's a dwarf. <sighs> Fine, all right. All right but I'll if, stay. if you no. go, I'll go. No, I'll stay. Okay. Lucian, they're going on a date. Fine, if you go, I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's this be the third meal. Meal. <laughs> Is this him? As you guys spill out onto the streets, um, there's, there's, this is the most people in the town. There's like a whole like twenty people on this street. Um, it's also only like dusk light. You know, that's that's the brightest in this town you've been, uh, short of being around that fire. Um, there's various people. You know, unlike most things where people cry out offers and bar barter, and uh, everyone's quiet. They clearly, this whole town is quiet. There's not music playing. There's not people shouting. There's not kids playing in the streets. There's just quiet. Too much noise might attract and attack. And really, what's there to be excited about anymore? P the only people who are shopping are like trading back and forth candlesticks or bits of glowing moss or like other scraps of clothes and actual like re. Like, you know, uh, full shirt and tunic, like back and forth. Um, 
very few people are exchanging any sort of real currency back and forth but the dwarf is you see him like pull like get handed like five platinum and he hands back just like three full candles and it was like pleasure doing business with you interesting how hmm. much money are we supposed to have at this point <laughs> if you haven't been keeping track of your uh sheet then i haven't because I, I was keeping track at some point, but I don't think that that amount is correct. Oh, it might be in... Oh, no, it's in Harley's inventory. Yeah. Is the, money that we earned it's... as the B team go to our A team character? Uh, nope, it stays with those characters. Okay. I mean, obviously, you yeah. can gift each other money, but... I have no idea how much money I'm supposed to have. But then you have to, like, make a second account and then friend yourself. Right. And yeah, you I mean, take, there's a lot of like laws a if you want to joint accounts. And your taxes get really ridiculous. Yeah, yeah got it's, it. It's, it's, just yeah. Out of, it's just out of whack. Do you really. your measurements? Eh, probably. Big. That's all I know. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> big, little, really big. <laughs> yeah. Alright, well, Leanne's going up to the door. Yeah, I'll follow. Alright, I know at least one of you sit here has a Prince of Shadows relationship. Who is it? Yeah, and Talos is just sort of like sneaking into the back. He's just like, mm hmm, mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not me. Talos. You, there's signs oh. scratched on the wall of this stand. There's tattoos on the fingers of Darren half an inch. The, he's He has a rhythm that he's tapping out on his knee as he's sitting there. <clears throat> you can tell he's an agent of the prince. I, um... I walk up to him, and I'm like, this is it. This is... This is it. I, if I, this is the turning point. I couldn't give this gift to the priestess after... I couldn't make amends with the priestess by taking out the the skin carpenter. So Bless now, Taylor, you can disrespect the man and respect his name. Come on, <laughs> put some respect on it. Um, so Talus is just sort of like, fuck it, right? Like, let's let's do it. Let's become evil. I give the, I like walk up to the guy, I give him, I give him the handshake. He's like, ah, friends, adventurers here. Oh, please come inside to my tent. And he, you know, gestures to the tent that's holding all of his goods and such. Um, there's mm, quite a number of a items. Word. Uh, there's a, there's like a whole box of healing potions and there's oils and such. Um, there's really nice armor and weaponry and such. And a lot of it is created up, not as if like he's, you know, I'm going to uncredit for sale later, but as if he's going to ship it off somewhere. Oh, okay. I'm guessing you're related <laughs> to some of the people we've heard about on the surface, but... Ha! <laughs> With that handshake, surely you know uh, of the operation. Uh, yes, I am the inside smuggler. I acquire items from these folk. I trade them items they need. Of course, it's a fair deal. You know, they get light. I get things they don't need anymore, like, you know, gold. Who's going to spend gold down here? Uh, and we, you know, send items and gold and other goods up. Uh, I don't know, the thief. Sure, the the messengers and the couriers, it's not a very reliable service, but uh, it, it's, it's, it's an honest it's an honest day's, you know, work of smuggling. For Shadowport, this is surprisingly honest. So, how can I help you? What can good old Darren Half an Inch do for you? You happen to have any armor you... or someone who's almost eight foot? Ha! Do I ever? And he starts rummaging through the back. Well, I take that back. We are friends with Talus then. Oh, come on now. Business associates at best, Kalia. I'm closer Wait. friends with the wizard in him than... 
Tim. Uh, yeah, got me there. Uh, uh, do, do his smugglers make the trip to Shadowport often? Uh, he's still digging through, and there's like the clatter of armor and such. He's like, "Oh, I know, just the piece, just the piece." And he calls out from inside his box, "Ah, uh, you know, it's really as often as I get someone, you know, willing to take on to get take some stuff out for me and you know get rewarded." Speaking of which, if you guys want to, you know, bring some stuff out when you go, I I have a couple shipments. Yeah, I was kind of hoping that, um, you know, since you live the life that you do, that you could get something to someone important for me. Someone real high up. He heaves out a huge, huge piece of armor and, um, like, plunks it down on the ground. Uh, like, whew! This is dwarven craft, but it is made for someone far bigger than a dwarf. You know, I'll be honest, even if this isn't a perfect fit, Kelly, you think it's better than your old armor. Ah, that's a clever piece of this thing, and he slaps it. It can mesh and little panels of diamond glass lock in place and the joints cog together, and it just, it's beautiful. Uh, it fits anyone. And it, it can stop and attack in its tracks. It's an out of character. Um, so if that's not your style, mm -hmm. let me know. I got, you know, you pretty much name an item and an icon that you like or don't like, <laughs> the white craft of. I can figure, I can connect you. Yeah, this, uh... This so this armor doesn't give me an AC bonus. It just has all armor gives you the AC bonus, but it doesn't give me any additional AC right. bonus. Damn. I mean, it gives you and a plus you're... two. It's a champion armor, but it doesn't give you an effect of an additional one. Oh, okay. You're, you're uh, you know. It's also not like a giant wedding cake dress. Yeah, I mean, uh. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll think about it. I, I like to peruse all my options before settling on something to purchase. All right, all right. A tough shopper. I hear you. I hear you. Let me see what else I got. Personally, I think that arm is a good pick. What, what kind of icons? Like, you, you clearly have a woman of taste, right? You know, I'm going to guess not priestess, though, you know? considering your company uh you know, yeah another icon like you're a big fan of like what they make and you do uh let's see she used to like the crusader doesn't anymore uh used to like the priestess doesn't anymore mm -hmm. ah you know what? hey Here, hey i one. never really liked her to begin with okay your friend looks like the leader type, but, you know, uh, either of you could wear this one. Um, he pulls out an emperor-made item. Hey, we got raided. That's hype. Nice! I see you guys. Oh, interesting. Choose to reduce this armor's bonus to plus one. So the armor that I currently have already has a plus one, but the other armor you said is a plus two AC bonus? Okay, let me take a look at your quick armor. You have the armor animation. It's yeah. a adventure tier armor, which means you gain plus one AC. A champion right. tier armor, of which these all are, give you plus two AC. Um, Got it. But your animation armor means that when you fall to zero health, uh, you get. And you should have used this earlier. <laughs> I think you. Well, I your... couldn't. I couldn't because oh. every time I go down, Leanne raises me back up with the free rally. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so I mean... that's that's why I'm probably gonna get rid of this because I can't even use it. Um. Hmm.
Uh, I don't know, Leanne. This one, the second one seems right up your alley. I'm, uh, I'm rather partial to my armor still. Especially after dealing with that dragon. Okay. Oh, any one attack that targets PD. Okay, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, considering. You got anything extra special back there? Maybe like a necklace or. Um, oh, you want necklaces? What kind or of? A, or a, or a weapon? Oh, we got we, Han. Please, who, who, who do you think I am? I'm Darren Half an Inch. Of course, I got what you want. Just name an icon, name a weapon type. I'll get. I'll. I'll, t I'll tell you what I should recommend for you. I'm looking for a new mace. Okay. Okay. You know the orc lord makes some pretty good melee weapons. Uh, let, let me see. Uh, you kind of a. You more of a no, noble, a boiling blood or a blood rage kind of gal. I like the sound of blood rage. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This one here. Let me, let me show you. This Blood Rage weapon uh, of Mace, you know, um, take a peek. That's, I didn't want to say that as Kelly. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I like that quirk, though. That's the downside of the Orc Lord stuff. All their quirks are kind of angry and bloody and fighting and war. Hmm. Could be useful as a last resort. Where was that posted? Oh, in character. Yeah, oh, they're kind of all going all over the place right now. <laughs> uh... But you know, if you like knowledge, that this one, this one's a little more, uh, this one's a little less, you know, angry. Um, which, I mean, you're only going to get with their nobles, right? Uh-huh. It lets you learn someone's name, and it gives you, you know, that that's, no one one's name is important, I hear. Right, right, yeah, no, I'm, uh, I think I'm going to get a little ragey. Yeah. I do. I do happen to miss attacks quite a lot. <laughs> well, huh. I just don't attack. I stay away from fights. Well, you know that's why that's why I, I wear all this armor is uh, so if I miss, I don't get hit. Um. You know what? Actually, I think I'm going to take the captain's armor, my good sir. What a fine choice. Now, what are you trading me in return? I do take the good lord and savior of the emperor's currency. Don't you worry. I'm only shopping the street that will. Well, it's... I happen to have a... Uh current set of armor that I'm wearing. Uh, that is uh, very interesting indeed. Uh, it is animated. And I think that uh, you or someone else, an associate of yours, would uh, find this armor very helpful if they were to ever go down and still need to fight on. Law number one. Tell you what. I'll, I'll do the armor trade. I'll do the armor exchange, but I'm going to give you a couple other items that if you make your way out of the Stone Thief, I want you to just go ahead and, like, you know, hand it to the associates of the chain. And all right, nothing too big. It's just things you can carry in your satchel and such. Uh, are these, like, um, illegal, perhaps? No, no, no. They're just, you know, old weapons and trinkets and valuables that have been eaten by the Stone Thief. Truly, oh, there's nothing uh, more noble than stealing what has been stolen by the stone thief back out of it, you know? Right, and if something were to happen to these items, we say we get ambushed... Yeah, no, the loss rate is pretty high, I mentioned that, yeah. 
is that uh, is that on me to pay back or well do you'll I be dead the prince? so i mean got it got it uh-huh yeah but i don't i don't know if i we uh... did once have someone try to like pilfer the items from us and it's like no that's not really how this is happening right and my associates on the surface took care of that right leanne um, what, are, what are you what are you feeling about this one how much would the armor cost just well you know if you're if you're going to do the trade-up i really don't think it's going to be more than like a i don't know 150 more gold on top of what your current armor has and if i just pay you i don't have to do your crimes for you right well they're not crimes right we're just i mean truly right. the stone thief is just an abomination reckoning the, the, the entire biome up above we're just getting things yeah. back out of it it's recovery operations but yeah you don't have to carry anything back out the end starts counting out platinum coins. Uh, you said 150 gold? 150 gold, yeah. With the trade. Yeah, well, I don't think you want to keep that armor, right? Uh, yeah, no, and I don't want to do your dirty work for you either. I got enough dirty work on my own to do. Alright, well... Well, he was not going to offer you his, like, dressing area, but now he's not. You're just going to have to change armor out here. Yeah, Kali starts stripping. Peeling the old Tari armor off and just tossing it on the ground at his feet. Uh, Alright. Doesn't even <clears throat> care. Doesn't even care. He just leaves it there. He'll he'll get an assistant to deal with it later. <laughs> it's probably bigger than he is. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like he'll get one of the local kids to like take care of it. And Callie's like, I'll be taking that. And she, like, grabs the chest piece and puts it on. All right. I will just adjust your armor in place then. This is now a 2 AC bonus. This is, you said the captain's armor? Mm hmm This is the captain's armor. I'm going to edit the description. I'll fix the formatting later. It's a very nice Empire-made thing. It resembles uh, Leanne's armor a lot, in fact. Um, and it's nicely trimmed with, like, red and gold along it. Hey, we match. Cute. Now, I suppose. Now, how about that mace? You, you interested in a weapon upgrade? How about the rest of you? Come on, there's a lot of you to shop with. Clearly, a, a venture such as yourself have a, you know need of an upgrade before venturing ben back into this terrible, terrible thief. I'm actually rather content with all of my equipment. Yeah, honestly speaking, like I would have need a weapon. Now, fellow dwarf, I have a couple, you know, ancestor items that you could consider. Mm. Let's see. The dame not wanting an ancestral item? I'm trying to look. I, 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 I haven't posted every... anything. Um, ancestral plate... It gives you a additional plus one AC bonus if you are a dwarf. So okay, long as you are not fighting dwarves or those linked to the dwarf king. So what's the total AC bonus? Uh, it would be plus three. Okay. Hmm. Now I, great. I know you have that like lightweight armor. Um, yeah, that's a plus two. I, uh, so what I'm unclear about with that is, is that a? So it says. It's AC plus two, but then additionally it says you gain a plus two bonus to AC while you're helpless, stunned, vulnerable, or weakened. You also have this bonus at the start of each battle until you take an action, uh, which we've totally not been uh, doing. Yeah, that it's would mean you have a plus four bonus in those instances. Okay. Versus a plus three pretty much all the time, because we mm -hmm. don't tend to fight other mm -hmm. dwarves. As always, you can upgrade an adventure item to its champion tier for money. What does he want for the uh, ancestral plate? 
Um, for a fellow dwarf, he he's only going to ask a hundred for it. What clan is he? Uh, he is, of course, uh, the... I don't know. I wasn't okay. expecting this question. But not not enough that he's willing to uh, uh, knock off anything for her being a jade spy. No, no. Um, but he will recognize your clan and give you some uh, gossip and hints about, like, I hear the Jade Spine's namesake is somewhere in the Hall of Ages. The namesake? The Jade Spine itself. Yeah, wow. We thought that was gone forever. That's uh, just a rumor. I mean, they also say an old emperor is wandering around down there, H half or all mad. Uh, who knows? Having met Ash, I'm more willing to believe that one now. Whoa! <clears throat> Just in that you are very old. Now, Dame, you had been interested in potentially getting a necklace for save bonuses. Um, yeah. Any, basically, help on my saves would be nice. I mean, there are some easy ones, like the Lodestone Pendant. It lets you know exactly where you are, depth, direction, distance to places that you know until the end of a battle or scene. Um, but it's quirk is that you are worried about getting lost. Um, let's see. Is that I'm... not already part of Dame's character? Yeah, I was just going to say, that feels... <laughs> pretty on brand yeah. yeah so they'll pretty much let you just do that but also say yeah i know exactly where i am um okay yeah but does bonus. that yeah to disengage checks to all saves oh okay that's that's pretty interesting actually but again that means you couldn't wear the um other eggshell necklace that's true Who is I can take weird? the I can take the eggshell necklace. I don't have one. Oh, you didn't get a necklace after all. No, no. Um. There's also the pendant of thunderous snoring. Um, it allows yes, she you... already snorts when she laughs. Let's get more like snoring in here. Yes. It allows you to be a bit aware while sleeping, and you can communicate via snoring. Um. <laughs> Uh, no, let's do that lodestone one. <laughs> let's go ahead and do the lodestone one, and, um... I think I do like the... other armor. We don't remember to do the noble's undershirt stuff enough. I think having a plus three all the time is worth more than having an occasional plus four that we don't remember to do. Okay, uh, the two of those together he'll give you for the sweet, sweet... Uh, and I, I assume you're trading in your old armor. Yeah. Yeah, he'll give you, like, the whole bundle for 200. He wanted 100 for the armor by itself. He wants... Uh, and then he's taking my old armor, so I'm selling that to him. And he's selling me the necklace. So you're telling me that the necklace is worth more than a hundred gold knowing where you are in the stone thief is a valuable valuable thing all right okay hey. 200 gold you're the gold and items exchange hands and he like pockets away the uh, the gold and he's like now I, I would be remiss to not remind to let not let you know i have some very fine oils runes and health potions these are dangerous areas. And that was a true statement. What about like fire potions? No, we got resistance potions. No, no, no. I mean like set things on fire. Oh, we got fire oils. Do you don't happen to have any of the uh, dragon oil, do you? Dragon oil, huh? Ooh, remind me what dragon oil is. You know what? It's not important. It's just a question. 
Actually, yeah. What what oils does he have for weapons? Uh, he has all sorts of um, elemental oils. You apply it to a weapon, and instead of giving you a bonus to attacks and damage like a normal oil, it lets you deal that kind of elemental damage. Um, it is 100 gold for a vial, and a vial works for a whole battle. Um, he has quelling oils. Uh, these are weird oils that make a magic item just kind of momentarily mundane. Um, the reason that you might do this is like if you can apply it to a enemy's weapon or if you are overloaded with quirks and items and need to just like put yours to sleep for a bit uh those are much cheaper at like 50 gold um a okay. regular oil will give you bonuses to your attack and attack damage and mm -hmm. finally uh he only has one vial of it but the oil of torment is a sticky ungent hot to the touch um, it's agonizingly painful to uh, a uh, to spirits and such. Um, it turn it gives you a bonus for the battle, um, and it permanently uh, like alters the item. And to, oh, the spirit in the item itself gets like re uh, turned into like. Uh, you know, get gets whipped up into a painful frenzy so it's like a plus you know your plus one sword might now be plus two forever it's a cursed item but it, it'll come with a curse and you can't get rid of it that's interesting and that's a whole 150 gold it's a dangerous proposition you're binding yourself so, to would that it make forever. would it make a mundane item into a magic item it would i get it i have two daggers right yeah i'm gonna do that and then um, I'm going of like while I'm handing over the coin, I'm just gonna clear my throat and say, uh, "You got a, you got any daggers? Any daggers? What made for throwing into enemies and whatnot?" Of course, my good friend. Of course. I'll put down a hundred. Just quick. get, uh, just get an oil. Actually, I'll get two. Okay. Let me see, um, what kind of throwing daggers? Any magic throwing daggers? Like, maybe a reusable one that comes back or something? Um, this one, sir, it's a fine, fine one. This is a, these are daggers of discretion. Discretion. You know, some what of those it? enemies, like the golems that are so popular here in the Thief, they, they like to leak, you know, when you, when they, you, you do damage to them. But, yeah. uh, you're a discretionary person, you know? Hmm. But, you know, if you're more about the throwing and catching thing, um, I got I got something, I think, just for you. And he goes back and pulls out, like, a really nice box and pulls out two daggers. These, you throw them, you teleport, and you catch No, them. shit. And How he, like, closes those? the box and holds away. I don't know if I want to give them up, though. <laughs> okay i see your game i see your game i didn't want to do this but uh i could get into a lot more trouble with that i pull out the uh that stolen amulet that stolen amulet you know the one i stole from the church oh yeah <laughs> he he looks at it like all right and uh i only i'm sorry i only got 25 gold left on me and i'll put that on the table as well well i suppose and he like pockets the amulet very quickly like because uh, you're a friend now can i make a contest to like replace it with a rock with my sleight of hand against his or something, since we're both <laughs> like we're both disciples of the Prince of Shadows, right? So can I like, as as I'm reaching for the daggers, like quickly palm the amulet again 
and like slip a rock into his palm? You can. Okay. Oh boy. And this is I'm this is me. I'm smiling. I'm making eye contact. I'm showing him all of my teeth. This is this I'm using my theater. You my you know, also my Disney have an icon relationship. Can. Yeah, I was gonna say I also have two sixes, so I mean oh, I can yeah, probably I help do. Out. Can I just do can I just use my six? To, so so this is the kind of thing where like he'll look at it later and he says, That kid's got a future in thieving, all right. <laughs> I think he knows that one. Yes, I still want to see the roll. Just for reference. Okay. Just just to see. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I'm using my Disney princess background. What? That's oh your background? God. What an amazing background. Yeah, theater and housekeeping. None of you, nobody's picked up on that. You uh, walk away from that transaction smiling at your omelet amulet still in hand you executed quite the sleight of hand um and you're sure he didn't notice and he's just sitting over there with a dumb dopey grin like he got out of this you know as a winner like he pulled one over on you and thinking that you know <laughs> yeah he got a better item out of the deal you got me. And you walk away with your very nice box daggers rattling within. No, not even rattling. They're nicely padded. I'm just going to stay. If you roll the one through five, I was going to use Curse of Chaos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you, uh, you, you're, you're startled, though, the sound of a horn starts echoing through the cavern. People are start, start pulling weapons out of nowhere and off of nearby, out of barrels and out, off of walls. Dungeon Town is under attack. Well, Kelly, I just have to put that fresh armor to work. Kidding, there we go. <laughs> I throw the dagger out the door. I'm so excited to use it. Do you really? Are you oh, sure how many... you want to throw a dagger out in the darkness? As people oh, are. What if, I, what if I do hit somebody? I would feel terrible. You would, feel you would terrible. probably also get, like, gangbanged by the entire town. Also, Absolutely. like, doesn't Kalia just, like, constantly emit, like, a little bit of light because she's an Asimir? Not a Morhan. Like, no. Oh, that's right. You're not, not, even, not even after Daddy gave me my powers back. But the closest. Light you generate is gonna be like your tattoo because Leanne is nearby. That's right. true. Right. It's far What's more the name visible of this tiger? Where where is it again? Where's the tattoo again? It's on your hand. Yes, it is on the top of her hand. So she could like use it like a torch. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so to reiterate, I will help make sure everyone has their items entered. Kalia has the um, eggshell necklace after the name bought her lodestone necklace um, and Powell bought two oils and you guys have a four of you have a bonus on your next recovery as if it's a healing potion um, that just gives you extra health and such and mm. that is where we will wrap up this session. I am very excited we got through the whole session off of just role play and shopping. Um, you know, let's go backwards. Seb, start us off. What's something you liked? What's something or someone you want to see again? And what kind of things do you think are attacking Dungeon Town? I think it's the orcs. I think it's the slavers. Um, because. I think the last time that we spoke to those pe people, they mentioned they they mentioned this place. So maybe the orcs have finally caught wind and and found out what's going on. I don't know. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Okay. Um. It was a slower pace session today, which I like. So, you know, I have. I sort of have a soft spot for the good role play, right? So whenever everybody gets into it, I just sort of sit back and listen myself. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's it's entertaining. So I would like to sort of call out the rest of the party for their role play because I just sat back and enjoyed it today. Um, the 
I gotta say, the idea of a raid <laughs> on a town like this with eight people is going to be interesting. I have a feeling that it's going to be very resource intensive for this these computers. <laughs> um, I promise I won't use animated tokens if I can avoid it. Right, but there's got to be like that one general, right? He's gonna be he's gonna be animated. Oh, They're yeah, gonna cheat. They they might they I mean it might be an ooze, right? Um. So, I yeah I think that's that's really what I'm looking forward to is really you know the moment you said raid, I kind of saw it coming right because it's too smooth too easy everybody likes us we're hanging out with a bunch of peasants we're the richest people here um so yeah max um yeah no i, I like the slower pace and just having a little bit of a breath in between all the different stuff and yeah i just liked i guess the party coming together and just seeing how some of those dynamics work I don't know. It's not always the smoothest group dynamic that we have in general, and now we're mashing two oh, very we different sure are. Oh, God, yes. Yeah, that that whole scene with Balrin, I gotta say, really was really was a hit, I think. I'm glad it paid off. Pout? Uh, session was good. Uh, one thing I really liked, uh, the music. Good. These were definitely new tracks that were being used. I noticed. It was good. Great. Uh, I like getting raided. That was cool. In both ways. Yeah. And uh, generally, this raid, I think, is going to be pretty interesting to uh, experience. It's been a while since we've had uh, like NPCs related in any regard. Like into a battle. Mm -hmm. I really hope you guys are prepared to play two characters next session. Oh god. So anyway, I started looking at two sheets and looking at every attack roll. This is literally going to be so slow as at least someone's going to get too confused about managing two character sheets. Rumham. It's going to be amazing. Oh, cough, Rumham, cough, cough, <laughs> Lucian. <laughs> Ellen? Let's see. I really liked the Provost. Um, I felt like he was one of the more vivid NPCs we've had in a while, and in a very different style. Like, you've give, you give us a lot of comic NPCs, but it isn't often you go for a serious one. And I, I liked him. Oh, yeah. I, I, I agree on that. Also, Loki kind of racist, the tiefling. Um, let's see, something I wanted to see again. Uh, I am really excited about this raid and seeing like what's going on and getting more of a feel for where Dungeon Town sits in terms of... like We, we understand how the Stone Thief appears to want things to run, and so I'm interested to see where Dungeon Town sits in the ever-evolving politics of everything else in there, and getting more of a view of that I think will be really interesting. I'm also really intrigued by this library, and I'm looking forward to going over there and seeing what that's up with. Yeah, no, if this was an all roleplay session, next session's gonna be all combat, baby. I don't even know if we're gonna finish it in one session. I'm excited. Rumham. Multi-session combat? Multi-track drifting. Uh, can we all just agree to, like, hang around for an extra two hours so we can make sure we finish it in one session? <laughs> Just running in the 90s. I mean, an option is we run two combats of you guys defending two gates and splitting up. Uh, any, any way you want, but that means you only have to manage one, each character and you can divvy up the parties any way you want. If that's more palatable, I'm happy to set it up that way. That might be easier. However, I'd... consider the following, Rumham. An occultist that has a commander to buff their damage output. When I said you can party, divvy up the parties either way, I meant it. If you want to put six and two, and yes. you want, 
but I don't trust anyone else. You know how I feel about long combat. It's it's ju- it's it's honestly just me. I just get bored during combat sometimes. Uh, otherwise, I really did enjoy this session. Um, uh, Max isn't here anymore, but his little quip about Lucian and Kalia finally getting along together was hilarious. Um, and yeah, fun roleplay. Uh, that's the kind of stuff I like to see. Uh, I hope we get to see more of um, the pr- Probst. Probst? Provost. Provost, yeah. Yeah. Um, I hope we get to see more of him. He was interesting. Um, and yeah, just not looking forward to long combat. But it, I'm whatever we do, I'm sure it'll work out. Yeah. All right. I also I wanted to give one last shout out. Yeah. Uh shout outs to the Me6 bot posting we were live at 9 47 <laughs> yeah maybe, uh, maybe a titch late uh maybe just a titch uh wait you guys didn't tell me what uh, you thought enemies were attacking um oh right right, right. Oh. my bad i think, I think it's, it's gonna skeletons. be it's gonna be an orgy of orcs skeletons maybe even in another undead Medusa, who knows? Who knows? I'm, ex- I'm expecting orcs, but it would also be a cool callback if, like, the flesh tailor was basically sufficiently pissed over losing his undead dragon. Oh. It could be stonesmiths from, like, um, um, what's his name? The Mad Butcher or whatever? It could True. be stone boys. I think we're far enough away that it wouldn't be the Mad Butcher, but I could see the flesh tailor being. Do you think he wouldn't hold a grudge? <laughs> No, 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 not that. I think we're far enough away from the territory that he controls that he wouldn't necessarily go that far outside of him. What if the Stone Thief saw Dungeon Town as enough of a threat to rally all of them, though? True. I don't know. I still... While it would be great to actually whack the Mad Butcher once and for all, I have a feeling it's probably going to be Orcs. Maybe Flash Taylor, but I'm thinking orcs. All right, we're going to uh, call it there, and we'll uh, we'll start the Grand Siege of Dungeon Town uh, next session. See mm-hmm. you in a week. <laughs>